talk to me about supplementation. Should women be supplementing with collagen? And if so, why? What are the reasons? Oh, that one's a hard one. <laughs> I have to chuck in a few hard ones. I know, you have I've to. I've got to. Okay, so if we look at collagen, there's things that aren't well known. We have collagen peptides. We also have native collagen, which is the whole molecule of the collagen. If we look at collagen peptides, because they're small bits of collagen, they're actually absorbed and can go to target tissue. And we see that there is evidence that if you're using type 2 collagen, which is joint specific, and you're using peptides, they can actually go and they can help attenuate the decline of some of the cartilage. So it does help with joints. If we look at using native collagen with that, native collagen or the whole collagen molecule is not absorbed, but it causes an immune response. So then you are getting an immune response that's telling the body not to attack the cartilage. So there is evidence to show that if you're looking at type 2 collagen specific to joints, that it can help with reducing the degradation of cartilage. It's not going to stop it, but it's going to help reduce it. Okay. When we look at the type 3s and 1s, which is the most common that's out there, that doesn't do anything for joints. That's your hair, that's your nails, that's some of the structural stuff around your intestines and organs, but it doesn't help with joints. Right. But when you look at most of the stuff on the, on the market and you're seeing things like vital protein, collagen protein, that's not protein that goes to our daily intake of protein because collagen does not count as our daily intake of protein because it's structural. It's one of the amino acids. Right, because it's structural. And they're always type 1 and 3. So they're like, yeah, you can take this supplement and it really benefits your joints and it accounts for your protein intake. It's like, no, it doesn't. One, it's the wrong kind of collagen. And two, it doesn't count for my protein intake. So do you say don't have collagen? I or ask, if you do, you don't have it as your protein intake. You don't have it as your protein intake. But if you're someone who has a family history or has a diagnosis of osteoarthritis, then it can be beneficial to use type 2s. But you have to be very cognizant that you want type 2, peptide, and native. Okay. And it's hard to find. So you have to do your due diligence to find it. Any good brands? No, I can't say that because it's global, right? Every country is a little yeah. bit different. Okay. And what about, I mean, I know it's not your area, but on the beauty side of things, because women are going to want it. I think women buy it for that reason as yeah. opposed to the, the bone density. Yeah. And when you're seeing people using collagen, the type ones and threes, then yes, they get strong nails, they get lustrous hair, all those mm -hmm. kinds of things. When we look at um, vegetarian and vegans, and they're not getting collagen, and you see this vegan collagen, walk away. Because there's no such thing as vegan collagen. There's a collagen booster, which is copper and zinc and vitamin C. You can use that. That's going to help your body's own production, but it's not going to be like ingesting collagen. So the jury's out on collagen. Yeah. We think, okay, we think yes, but very specific on what type. Right. And it's not going towards your protein daily intake. Correct. Because it's only one of the amino acids. Correct. Okay. Magnesium. Yes. This is a big one. Yes. There's lots of types of magnesium. Yes. This is not talked about at all. So can you give your outtake on magnesium and which one should women be looking at? Yes. Yeah, so there is some data that shows that magnesium is beneficial for sleep. And this is primarily because of our muscle contractions, right? So we want to have a relaxation of everything. So if we have enough magnesium to support brain and muscle, then yes, we can get to sleep. We need one that crosses blood-brain barrier to help. And this is a biglycanate. There's only one. Yep. Isn't there? Yep. So when you're looking at your magnesium supplement, you don't want to go for, what is it, oxalate? Because that's a laxative. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very conscious that you want to look for a bigalaginate or a glycanate. Okay. Creatine. It's the best thing out there. I knew you'd say that. Okay. How should people be looking at creatine and how much should they be taking? Yeah. So your body naturally produces around two grams a day. If you have a diet that is um, meat oriented, then you're also ingesting a lot of creatine that way. Uh, most women don't eat enough. 
to actually provide as much as the body actually goes through. We see there's a change across the menstrual cycle of how your body uses and regulates creatine. So we see that there's a increase in creatine kinase, which is your breakdown in the high hormone phase, because again, progesterone is trying to provide all the building blocks. So really having the availability of more creatine helps with that too. If we're looking at supplementing with creatine, we want creatine monohydrate and I don't get any kind of kickback from this company, but the company that produces Crea Pure, this is a German B2B, meaning business to business. Crea Pure is patented, and so it uses a water wash. There's no real side effects from using it. It's pure, and it's in almost every high-quality creatine monohydrate product that's out there. So if you're looking at something that has Crea Pure on it, you want to start with one to three grams and work your way up to five grams over the course of about three to four weeks. And that's going to attenuate any possible side effect. Okay. If you're looking at a cheaper version of creatine monohydrate, it comes as an acid wash because it's cheaper to produce it through acid, um, evaporative and other things in the lab than it is to use a water wash, which is really specific. And this is why we start to see a lot of bloating and stomach discomfort and some of the other side effects that we see. Okay. So again, being consumer, be aware. Be aware. Yeah. And a lot of people talk about creatine with DOMS. Yeah. Should people be having it a specific time after they exercise? Where should we be consuming it? No. No, because it doesn't have an acute effect. It okay. takes about three weeks for the body to be saturated. Okay. So you need to... That's why you're building it up. Yes, yes. And once it's saturated and has enough, that's when you start to see the performance effects. We see that over the course of three to four weeks of consistently using three to five grams every day, you get that full saturation, muscle works better, brain works better, guts better because anything that has a fast energetic requires creatine. So we see that you know, the brain fog starts to be attenuated with creatine use. We start to see gut issues with women who, oh, I go for a run, I had to find a, a bathroom every time I go for a run. Using the three to five grams over the course of a month, then that starts to dissipate as well. Wow. Because it maintains the gut integrity of the intestinal cells. You don't have as much of that separation because now you have creatine that's going to work in those energetics to hold it together. And then also we see for mood and mood health, creatine is really beneficial for that too. So actually most women are perimenopausal, maybe all women, but I'm just really thinking about the things, side effects that we were talking about or you know, the physical sides that we might see in oneself when we're perimenopausal. This could be an amazing supplement. Absolutely. Absolutely. Gosh, it's interesting how it's not spoken about more. It's very much spoken in the sports domain, I think, but just general health for women, it's just not spoken about. Yeah, so Crea Vitalis and Creatine for Life. Okay. Creatine for Life website has all the stuff that creatine does for health. And there are a lot of my colleagues in the sports science and supplement world that also are doing research on creatine for health. And so all the peer-reviewed studies that you can find are on Creatine for Health website. Crea Vitalis is an offshoot of Crea Pure that is designed specifically for health and not bodybuilding. So it's a lower dose and it's a very high quality protein or high quality uh, creatine supplementation. So there's definitely stuff that's coming out and it's a push to get into the health space for both men and women. Um, but yeah, it's slow coming. 